What's cracking, carpet enthusiasts? It's Carpet Mike here from CarpetExpertBlueprint.com. Just got a call from Prestige Carpets. We're doing a basement today. He's on site with the most miserable concrete on the planet. Now, the real question is, does Prestige know how to swing a hammer, or is it really that bad? I'm in route right now to find out. Let's see what happens here. So check this out, everybody. We're on site right now. He could not get any of this tack strip to stick, but one thing is to always, always, always keep your teams moving. So just because the man that knows how to swing the hammer isn't there doesn't mean progress can't happen. A lot of people sit idle and that's the worst thing possible. So go ahead and lay the pad. Worst case, you just channel it out and then go ahead and install those strips. And guess what? They're going down kind of okay. It's not too bad. Wasn't the easiest thing on the planet, but you know, a solid stiff swing there and you're off to the races. That was the cheesiest thing I've ever said today or in the last 10 minutes at least. But seriously though, there's a couple other routes you can go about doing this. You know what I'm saying? You could glue it in. You could use a slide hammer. You could use a drill, which so many people would say, blah, blah, blah. We ain't using no drill. We swinging hammers, man. So... Test different nails. Always have a variety of concrete pins with you. 11 16s, 5 8s. And in this particular case, I set it back just a little bit further than we typically would from the baseboard. So when you go crazy with that hammer, swinging in, driving those nails home, they really truly do grab. And you don't have to worry about smashing that baseboard if you're too close and too tight to it. And just work your way around the room. If there's any bit of give whatsoever, take your time. Add a few more nails, make sure life is nice and secure because the last thing you want is to be blasting on these rooms, throwing on a good stretch and have the strip pop on you. That's the worst feeling in the world. When the strip pops, you got to pull the carpet back, reset the strip, go ahead, clean up the mess, blah, blah, blah. It's just aggravating headaches. So make sure it's secured and tight the first time around so you don't have any issues when you cross the finish line on your installation here but we are far from finished on this deal let's get a little bit deeper on this job and see what's good strips are going down kind of with ease so when you run into this situation don't be afraid to set it back a little bit from the wall get a little more aggressive with the hammer worst case scenario you got to glue them in and come back the next day to make it happen Let's get on to some real money making opportunities here. Uh, yeah, bro. I already said that. I don't know why that was in there twice, but hey, you got to see the ceiling in the place. That was pretty dope how they sprayed it all black. I was digging that. I don't know if this is going to be a fitness room or what for them, but we got our first shot about to go down. Very nice layout on this basement. You couldn't ask for a better layout to make some easy money. It was under 20 foot wide by 24 feet long, so just two nice shots. Seam down the middle, seam on the hallway over there, and then a flight of stairs. So right there, you see me? I'm shaping out the stairs. We got Prestige going to slap those stairs up. We're going to start dropping those in place. He could do his thing, start popping them in. I'm going to continue cutting everything and tossing them around the side while he's installing those. You don't get to see my freehand cut skill. What the heck happened there, bro? Lights went out. Lights are back. Don't worry, not a power outage. We were playing with the lights, trying to figure out why none of the outlets were working. There was only one working outlet in this basement. Now we wrap the carpet around the pole here. I am burning the carpet back together where we had wrapped it around the pole. Now I could get down to cutting the long seam now that everything is back together and ready to rock. So in this video, this is the first time you stumble upon my stuff. I freestyle almost everything I do. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of years under your belt to be able to do that. So don't be discouraged if you can't. Grab a straight edge, line it up, and use that straight edge to go ahead and make your cuts. Good to go. So now we're stretching on one half of the room, kind of setting things up, getting all the slack out so we can line up the other piece and put that long seam together. So if there's any bubbles in the middle of the room, you will want to avoid seaming everything together right off the rip. I know some people would argue with that, but if there's bubbles in there and you seam it, you could actually seam the bubbles into place. So you certainly don't want to get involved with that issue. Go ahead and get it the length nice and tight. Unroll your second piece. Go ahead and fold it back. We're going to cut this seam now. Get a nice clean edge on that one. Take the knife all the way down. Finish cutting over there. And then we're going to go ahead and slide it over. Get that seam lined up. Once it's lined up in place, we'll go ahead and cut down all that excess. And we are going to burn this bad boy together. Moving right along. Pay attention in a second here. You know how Prestige and Chase Nasty are constantly stepping on my seams. It's only like a hair second. But you'll totally see that they do this to me on a regular basis. Without even like knowing that they're doing it. They're just hanging out with the homies. Stepping on seams. Acting like it don't matter. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here he comes. Duh. There was Prestige standing on the seam. Now that's a super time lapse video there. But man he was hanging out for a minute there. I'm like I'm glad this is your job. And you're stepping on your seam. Now right there. I doubled up the tack strip. 
Now, the reason I doubled up the tack strip is because we had a funky little bubble in it, and I had to get a little more stretch on it to pull that bubble out. Now, when you're using a crab stretcher on concrete, one row of tack strip will typically pop, especially on a, a concrete subfloor that's rough like this. So in a case like that, just double up the tack strip. This will give you a little more reinforcement and will hold your stretcher in place rather than pulling the strip out on you, making your life miserable. So we did good there. We're gonna go ahead and lock it on one more spot. I'm gonna go ahead, boom, boom. Get, look at that good pull there. Pulling all that juice to the wall. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the kicker. We're gonna take all that juice to the tack strip, securing it in place. You know, pop that, get that out of the way, lock that bubble up, and everything is good to go. Bubbles out. Let's finish kicking on this room. Nobody kicks faster than me. That wasn't even sped up there. Look at that. Da, 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 da. Making money, kicking this rug, getting to the finish line, gonna get my money. Yeah, freestyle carpet songs. Anyway, stretch on the rooms there. Have your crew trim and tuck behind you. And if you don't have a crew doing that, go ahead, fall back, handle it yourself. We have beautiful raised baseboards on this job site, so everything tucked very nicely. Now we got to set our last metal. Thankfully, the concrete worked just fine on this because anytime you have a difficult concrete, the metal can be the trickiest part because you really have to drive that nail home and make sure it grabs. Same exact scenario. Just go ahead and set your nails in it, smash them in. See that one bent over, so we're gonna set one about a quarter inch over from that. Make sure it grabs. Knock that old crappy one out of there. You see that? You gotta keep on making sure everything is holding in place because if you just assume that metal's gonna pop after you tap it down and that is the, one of the most aggravating factors in the flooring business here. So take your time. See how they're just smashing in real nice and I grab the lip and I give it a little wiggle wiggle just to make sure everything's grabbing properly. That's to save me aggravation at the finish line. Yeah, it looks like we made it to the other end here. Let's see if I get lucky on that one. Eh, I don't know. Did I get it? Looks like I didn't get it all the way. We're going to throw one more in there for good measure. Smash it down. Now we're good to go. So there's the hallway off of the big room where the metal I just set is at the opposite end of that. I got the seam tape under there. Everything's lined up. I'm going to make a couple little rough cuts. Get you a closer view of it here. We got the seam iron. We're going to go ahead and burn this on. And let that sit for a good 10 minutes or so. And once that's nice and dry and cured, we're good to go. Now, I stopped filming at this point. I realized I didn't take any final product pictures. But that's a breakdown overview of the job. How to handle obstacles and challenges, blah, blah, blah. All that good stuff. As always, I truly appreciate you tuning into this. Thank you so much. And I'll connect with you on the next video.